Dr. Pallavi Rayalavhale and I am teaching you the unit 4 of BP405T and we are discussing about the phytochemical ingredients present in plants. The topic for today is definition, classification, properties and test for identification of tannins. There is also a topic of volatile oils which we will be discussing briefly under this lecture only. So, if I talk about the tannins, what are tannins actually? So, tannins are basically again a polyphenolic structure just like the flavonoids, but they are slightly different. We can call many of the flavonoidal structures as tannins as well depending upon the properties, but there are few differences as well. So, if I define tannin, the first thing is that it is a complex structure which is organic and it is completely non-nitrogenous in nature. It does not contain any nitrogen in its structure. That is the first uh, you can say requirement for a substance to be tannin. Then it is polyphenolic in nature which has a very high molecular weight. So, tannins are generally high molecular weight substances found in many plant products of secondary metam metabolism. This term tannin was first time given by Sanguin. Uh, Sanguin is a researcher in 1796. Uh, he gave the uh, a substance which had the ability to change the color of the animal hide and convert it into leather. Okay. So, because of the properties of these tannins to react with the proteins present on the animal skin and converting that animal hide into leather. So, that process was known as tanning of hide and because of this the name of tannins was given as a tannin. So, this is one use uh, in history uh, of these tannins because of which uh, uh, how uh, they understood that okay, these tannins have the chemical property of uh, uh, reacting with the skin of animals and giving a particular color as well as forming the leather. Now, this same property was used in medicinal nature as well because of this protein precipitating nature or I can also name it as the astringent nature. So, tannins are generally the first thing that comes along with tannin the word which is always associated with tannin is that they are astringent substances. These are few examples of these tannins. The Ashoka bark, the Ashoka tree, okay, it has a very good effect on the uh, uh, uter uh, uterus, okay, female uterus, it has a very good uh, effect on that, it acts as a tonic for the uterus. Then we have the Baheda fruit, Baheda fruit is a part of the Trifala churna, you must have heard of Trifala churna, it is made up of three ingredients, one is the Avla, then we have Harde and then we have the Baheda. So, this Baheda is a rich source of tannins. Avla also a very well known drug, Avla, all of you must have used it at some point of time. It is also a tannin and you must have seen then when we use this Avla, our hands get colored, okay. it becomes dark blackish in color. Now, what, why is this happening? Because the tannins in the Avla, they are reacting with our hand and giving it a black color. Or if I talk that even if I cut Avla and dry it, then the green color gradually changes to a brownish black color. Why? Because the tannins they gradually convert dry and convert into a colored compound. Then we have the pale katechu, in common language we call it as the katha. Now, katha is used by normally for other purposes, but in uh, pharmaceuticals it helps in maintaining the uh, you can say water content in the body and does not uh, let the dehydration occur. So, this is a traditional application of the pale katechu. Again a similar derivative is there, black katechu, the difference is in the color. Then we have tea. Now, tea we know that it has a stimulant effect, the stimulant effect is due to the alkaloid caffeine, but the color of the tea which we can see that is due to the tannins. Okay. Then we have the Arjuna bark, Arjuna bark which is a very good cardio 
tonic drug and we have many formulations like the Arjuna Rishtha which, which is used by the Ayurvedic practitioners for treating cardiac issues. And lastly the clove or the long which is having a crimson red color and this dark color is due to the tannins present in the form of chlorogenic acid. It is known as chlorogenic acid. Now, what are the characteristics of the tannin? So, this is very important for tannins. Tannins they normally form colloidal solutions with water. They are non crystalline substances which are pale yellow to light color, light brown colored. Okay. They are soluble in water, alcohol, dilute alkali as well as glycerin. So, generally they are water soluble, they are polar compounds because of their polyphenolic nature but they are insoluble in organic solvents exam, except for acetone. They do not dissolve in either benzene, chloroform, ethyl acetate etcetera. They, the molecular weight is generally high and it is in the range of 500 to 20,000. So, the molecular weight range is very very high compared to the normal phytochemicals. Uh, and it can bind with proteins and form insoluble or soluble tannin protein complexes. The solutions are acid and have a astringent taste. Now, if we look at the classification, before I move further for the classification, I would like to share one test which is generally done for the tannins which is known as the gold beaters test. Okay. Now, in this gold beater test we can either use the gold beater skin or we can use the animal hide powder. Okay. So, gold beater skin is nothing but the membrane which is prepared from the intestine of an ox. Okay. So, the intestine is taken and it is first soaked in 20 percent HCl. After that it is washed nicely with distilled water and again placed in the tannin solution for about 5 minutes. After that again it is removed, washed again with distilled water and kept in a ferrous sulphate solution. As soon as we add the ferrous sulphate solution, the tannins they start convert the tannins present on the skin because they have precipitated the Fe, FeSO4 will give us a blue or blue or black color showing the presence of the tannins. Okay. So, this is one test which tells us that whether the tannins which is reacting with the animal protein is present or not. Now, we come to the classification because this helps as a one of the basis for the classification. So, the first classification is that the tannins can either be the true tannins or the pseudo tannins. True tannins are those tannins which give a positive gold beater test. Okay. Now, go back to the gold beater test. Gold beater test was done to check the precipitation of the the proteins of animal hide through this tannins. So, if this tannins can precipitate the proteins, they are the true tannins. And in case they give a negative uh, pseudo tannins, uh, a neg negative gold bitter test, then we will call it a pseudo tannin, means no black or brown color was observed. Okay. So, this is the first classification. Now, further the true tannins are classified into hydrolyzable tannins, condensed tannins and complex tannins. We will see what are the hydrolyzable tannins. Before we uh, go further and discuss about the hydrolyzable tannins, let us see in detail about the true tannins and pseudo tannins. So, true tannins are the polyhydroxy phenolic compounds which convert animal hide to leather by precipitating the proteins and give the gold bitter skin test which is for basically for the true tannins. An example here is elagic acid. While pseudo tannins are those tannins, they are the phenolic compounds of plant origin, but they do not convert animal hide to leather. Uh, but they and they do not give the positive gold bitter test that is why they are known as the pseudo tannins and the example for this is chlorogenic acid this is the structure of a chlorogenic acid 
Now, we come to the next classification as the two tannins they are classified as hydrolyzable tannins, condensed tannins and complex tannins. We will discuss about the hydrolyzable tannins. The tannins they are hydrolyzed by acids or enzymes and can produce gallic acid or elagic acid. I okay, will just show you this reaction that in case we take the hydrolyzable tannins and perform the dry distillation. Dry distillation means we are just heating it, but we are not going to condense it like we normally do in case of distillation. Here there is no use of water, they are just heated and we see what are the products. So, in case we get pyrogalols and phenolic compounds, then we will call it as a hydrolyzable tannin. For example, I take the structure of gallic acid. It has three phenolic groups. And when we do the dry distillation, what happens is that the carboxylic acid gets removed and now it has been converted into a pyragalol. Okay, this is a pyragalol structure. So, when this kind of reaction is taking place, we call it a hydrolyzable tannin, where the tannin is getting converted to a simpler form. Okay. So, chemically these are the esters of phenolic acids like gallic acid and elagic acid. The tannins derived from gallic acid are known as gallitannins and those derived from elagic acid are known as the elagitannins. The gallic acid is found in rhubarb, clove and elagic acid is found in eucalyptus leaves, myrobalans means the baheda, okay, uh, ashoka, uh, arjuna, pomegranate bark also contains the elagic uh, elagi tannins. These tannins treat, uh, treat when it is treated with FeCl3, they generally produce a blue black coloration. So, they are producing a blue black coloration when they are treated with FeCl3. If we just look at this structure, here you can see that this is one carboxylic acid structure here and then we have another uh, structure which is present here. So, it is a combination of two gallic acid, elagic acid is actually the combination of two gallic acids coming together to form the elagic acid. So, we can say elagic acid is also a type of a hydrolyzable tannin and when we are treating with iron salts, then it produces blue fluorescence. So, iron salts can be FeCl3 or FeSO. And they, if they are producing gallic acid, we call it gallitannins. If they are producing elagitannins on hydrolysis, we call it elagitannins. Okay, we have discussed the examples already. Gallitannins are generally rapid soluble, rapidly soluble in water, while elagitannins they soli, uh, solubilize in water, but very very gradually. Now, we come to the condensed tannins. Now, in condensed tannins what happens is that when we perform the dry distillation of the condensed tannins, then they produce the catechol tannins. They are generally not the gallic acids or the pyrogalols, but they are the decomposed products. They generally decompose to produce the phenes. Such compounds are known as the condensed tannins. Okay. So, these tannins are resistant to hydrolysis and they are derived from the flavanols, catechins, flavan 3, 4 diols. On treatment with acids or enzymes, they are decomposed into phloba phenes. On dry distillation, condensed tannins produce catechol and these tannins are called as catechol tannins. These tannins are found in cinchona bark, male fern, areca seeds, tea leaves and wild cherry bark, even baheda fruits as well as amla. They produce green color with the ferric chloride solution. Okay, so, earlier we have seen blue fluorescence in case of hydro hydrolyzable tannins, here we find the green uh, 
fluorescence. Okay. So, when heated with acids, they are self condensed, polymerized and converted to insoluble lead colored compounds, red colored compounds that is the phenes. With iron salts, they give the green fluorescence and examples are cinchona and cinnamon. Then we have the complex tannins. These are those tannins which contain both the hydrolyzable as well as condensed tannins together and the example is tea and quercus. So, condensed tannins are defined as tannins in which a catechin unit is bound glycosidically either uh, to a gallotannin or a elagotannin unit. The example is acutissimum uh, min and here there is a complex where we have the gallic acid groups and we have the elagic acid groups along with the catechol groups which are joining together in the ratio of 1 is to 39 and forming the complex tannins. The chemical test for tannins first is the gelatin test where we use the tannin solution and add aqua solution of gelatin and sodium chloride. A white buff colored precipitate is produced in gelatin test. In phenazone test, we have the mixture, we uh, take the mixture of aqueous extract of drug with sodium acid, uh, acid phosphate, it is heated and cooled and filtered. A solution of phenazone is added to the filtrate. The bulky colored precipitate is formed. In matchstick test or catechin test, we generally dip it in a aqueous plant extract, dry it near the burner and moisten it with the HCl. On warming it again, the matchstick wood will turn into pink red color due to the formation of the fluoroglucinol. In chlorogenic acid test, we will take the extract of chlorogenic acid which is generally found in cloves or in green coffees and we will, uh, we will add aqueous ammonia. So, a green color is formed on exposure to the air. The vanillin hydrochloride test, we will take the sample solution add vanillin hydrochloride reagent which contains 1 gram of vanillin and uh, uh, 10 ml of alcohol and concentrated uh, uh, hydrochloric acid in 10 ml. A pink color or a red color is formed due to the formation of again the fluoroglycinol. So, with this we have discussed about the basically tannins and now we are going to the next topic in this lecture itself that is the volatile oils. So, what are these volatile oils? Volatile oils are the odorous principles of plants and animal source and they evaporate when exposed to the air at ordinary temperature. They are hence known as volatile or ethereal or essential oils. Okay. So, if we place a fixed oil on a filter paper and a volatile oil on a filter paper, after some time what will happen that fixed oil being of a heavy nature and non-volatile nature, it will spread on the filter paper. But of the volatile oil itself, it will evaporate in the atmosphere. If the tem room temperature is higher, it evaporates very fast. If it is on a lower side less than 10 degree, then it will evaporate gradually, but it will definitely evaporate. So, such substances are the volatile oil and the peculiar nature of volatile oil is that they always have a essence or a smell to it. That is why they are known as essential oils as well. It is usually contained in some special secretory tissues of the plants, for example, in the oil ducts of the umbelliferous fruits like in case of the coriander. Coriander seeds has a very odorous nature. So, this is present in the duct present on the fruit known as the vita. Then there are oil cells or oil glands present in the epidermal cells also of many fruits. For example, lemon, oranges, they have small, small ducts present on their fruits and when we just open it or press it, we can see some oily substance coming out of it. That is nothing but a volatile oil. Then the mesophyll of a eucalyptus leaf. The eucalyptus leaf or the nilgiri oil which is present from eucalyptus, it is present in the mesophyll tissue of the leaves. Then we have trichomes of several plants, for example, tulsi plant, it has a very good aroma due to the oil present in the trichomes of the tulsi leaf. Now, these volatile oils, they have a basic unit structure which is known as the isoprene unit okay? and it is generally 5 carbon containing 
compound we can see that it is having 5 carbon atoms generally they can be unsaturated also and uh, the basic formula which is considered for this is C 5 and H 8. So, terpenes are defined as a natural products whose structure may be divided into isoprene units. Now, how do these isoprene units exist in nature and in what forms? So, if isoprene unit is alone, then in that case we call it hemiterpene or C 5 H 8. Okay. If it exists as a combination means two isoprene units coming together, so C 5 H 8 is becoming C 10 H 16. In that case, it is known as a mono terpene okay and this mono terpene it is generally present in the volatile oils it will always have tin carbon atoms then if we have three isoprene units coming together it becomes c15 and h24 so many of these are also present in the volatile oils if 4 isoprene units come together, it becomes C 20 and H 32. If uh, 6 isoprene units come together, then it becomes C 30 and H 48 known as the triterpenes. Okay. So, we have hemiterpenes, monoterpenes, sesquiterpenes, diterpenes and triterpenes out of which the monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes are a major uh, category of compounds which are, exist as volatile oils. So, volatile oils if we talk about the monoterpenes that is C 10 they can be they can ex exist either as the acyclic compounds, monocyclic compounds or bicyclic compounds. Sesquiterpenes can again exist as acyclic, monocyclic, bicyclic and tricyclic compounds and the third category is that we can have certain aromatic compounds as well which fall in the category of volatile oils. They can further be classified based on their functional groups like if it is containing alcohol example is cardamom and coriander, if it is containing aldehyde example is cinnamon and lemon peel, if it is containing ester then example is lavender and mustard. If it is a hydrocarbon, example is turpentine and black pepper. If it is ketone, example is caraway and camphor. If it is oxide, example is eucalyptus and chenopodium. If it is a phenolic ether, then the example is phenol and nutmeg. And if it is a phenol volatile oil, then it is a club. So, these were the few classifications of the volatile oils. And if we look at the chemical test, for every drug there is a specified chemical test, but if we look at the general test for volatile oils, then the first test is then we take the alcoholic solution of Sudan red and mix it with volatile oil, it gives the red coloration, it produces red coloration. When we use tincture alkane and to that we add uh, this our volatile oil, then it again produces a red color. And when we add vanillene sulfuric acid to our volatile oil, it produces a yellow orange color. So, here we have basically discussed regarding the different types of volatile oils which can be either monoterpenes, if they are monoterpenes and have a acyclic means straight chain structure we call them acyclic, if they are having a single cyclic structure without unsaturation then we will call it monocyclic. If they have two cyclic structures without unsaturations, there can be a complete benzene ring also. If there is a benzene ring, we call it a aromatic compound, but here we have only one or two single uh, double bonds, then we will call it a bicyclic structure. If in cisquiterpenes, because in cisquiterpenes what happens that we have C 15 and H it is basically 24. In that case, we can call it as the uh, uh, sesquiterpene where we have acyclic, monocyclic or bicyclic and tricyclic structure. So, in this lecture we have discussed mainly about the, uh, the tannins, 
uh, what are tannins, what is a gold bitter test, they are classified into true tannins and pseudo tannins as well as uh, the, uh, the true tannins are further classified into the uh, hydrolyzable tannins, condensed tannins and complex tannins. We saw the different chemicals test for these tannins and what are the pharmacological effects, they are generally used as astringent products. Then we discussed about the volatile oils, how they are produced from the terpenes and how these terpenes are further classified based on their functional groups. And finally, we discussed their chemical tests. So, with this we end this chapter unit 4 of BP 405T. Thank you very much.